गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग गुड आफ्टरनून नमस्कार आदाब सत श्री अकाल वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ द आर के शो टू जर्नीज फ्रॉम माय सोल and today the journey takes us into kolkata or calcutta as it was originally called the present day city of kolkata and i am very intimately connected you know this is going to be an episode where i'm going to be speaking from really my soul because my early memories of my life happened to be from kolkata or calcutta and um, before we dive in it's always very essential to know the relevance of why do i go there and what is this journey all about well the truth is uh, my mother side of the family belongs to calcutta and even from my father's side my father his older brother and a lot of history from my father's you know lineage is deeply connected to the city of calcutta as it was called in the days and we will delve into all of that as we get in into the show but kolkata well it is a unique city calcutta was created or was formed as a result of job charnak job charnak was in the year 1690 one of the british um, east india company purveyors who was around in the area the swampy land around the hugli river and they needed a place to establish their fort or presence in the eastern part of the country from where they could do trade reason being emperor akbar had actually given mention of kolkata or kalikata in his rent roll that he had where he used to collect rent from through the nawabs of murshidabad back in the early days but the britishers when they were given the okay to set up trading posts in india the area around calcutta seemed to be the most ideal one because it had a port entry the river hugli can take in ships actually so it had a port entry it was well protected by the salt lakes uh, to the east of the hugli river and a creek a little bit towards the northwest side of the city of calcutta today job charnak of course is known as the person who identified the land which subsequently the british east india company took on from the local land owners and created the city of kolkata of course there's a old joke that goes around sometimes as to how did the name kolkata even come well the old mythological funny story is that there was a grass cutter in the area around the maidan of kolkata who was cutting grass and there happened to be this britisher on a horse who asked him what is the name of this place and the poor grass cutter did not understand a word of what the britisher was saying and so he said maybe this guy is asking when did i cut this grass and he said kolkata kolkata so kolkata meaning i cut this grass yesterday and hence the name kolkata came about in the british parlance kolkata meaning i cut it yesterday and therefore it has become uh, what is called as kolkata now but that is just a joke that goes around in most places in at least uh, some parts of kolkata the truth is the britishers needed a place to install themselves to do trading from because emperor farooq shah who was a mughal emperor had given them the ability to kind of trade in the eastern part of the country for just a paltry sum of 3000 indian rupees paid on a yearly basis as compensation so they took on the lands from the local land owners but who were these local land owners well as the folklore goes there were seven villages around the hugli river three of them of course even to date are prominently visible in the city that exists under the name of kolkata it is sutanoti or sutonoti which is known as sutapatti by most people in the bada bazar area govindapur or govindpur and kalighat or kolikata so the combination of these three villages of sutonoti govindapur as well as kalighat came to form the city of kolikata or kolkata or calcutta as the britishers called it the history of calcutta although much 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 newer than that of delhi and then that of agra or any of the other places that we are historically visiting as a part of the journeys from my soul calcutta has just has seen its development from 1690 onwards uh, when jab charna kind of took these villages over and converted it into a fort but calcutta has been a very prominent place or kolkata has been a very prominent place in the history of india and independent india and also in the freedom struggle of india because the british established the first capital of the british east india company in calcutta and that was the reason why britain found presence and established a lot of their significant governmental presence in the area of the city of calcutta the history is such that bengal belonged to the nawabs of murshidabad or the nawabs of bengal and murshidabad was their capital well of course we will get into the food side of it as well 
but one should know that the biryani and the mughlai food of murshidabad rivals or stands at par with that of lucknow hyderabad and of course delhi unfortunately it didn't get the kind of recognition and prominence because uh, you know it's all about marketing hyderabad got marketed very well on the food front lucknow got it marketed even more brilliantly by so many chefs kind of you know claiming to have come out and come with the dumpuk cuisine and popularized it and of course delhi being the home of the mughal empire the the base of the mughal empire obviously mughlai food kind of you know took a lot of prominence in the delhi area but let's not forget that the nawab of bengal who were based in murshidabad which is a place 60 miles north of calcutta had a big presence as far as mughlai food goes but before the british came to calcutta bengal was ruled from murshidabad and in 1756 the nawab of bengal shirajuddaula attacked the city of what was called then the fort of calcutta and captured it you know when it was attacked of course robert clive who then happened to be british east india kind of manager leader governor of british east india company went into a battle with the nawab of bengal which was shirajuddaula and the big battle of plassey happened and therefore the city of calcutta was recaptured in the year 1757 by robert clive robert clive has a very very interesting history as we all know we won't get into it in this episode because uh, this is more about my journey but those of you who are interested should know the fortunes of this man called robert clive and how his presence in india and his activities in india led to him being called as sir robert clive and him getting a lot of prominence when he went back to britain subsequent to his tenure in india uh, but it is warren hastings who was the first governor general of india who made it the seat of the power and established the supreme court and the justice department for the british east india company and also set up the revenue generation administration and therefore by default the capital of british east india in 1772 all the important offices were subsequently moved after the british east india company quelled the nawabs of bengal and moved everything from murshidabad to calcutta by 1800 calcutta had become a busy and flourishing town it was the center of the cultural as well as political and economic life of not only bengal but in days to come even that of india because by the time the raj took over which is queen victoria after she deposed the british east india company and took over as the queen of india as well the presence of calcutta took on a different meaning altogether it became the capital of the british empire or the british raj in india and therefore played a significant role in the development of the indian political economic and cultural situation between the mid 1800s to independence and thereabouts because calcutta has played a massive role in all of this for roughly about 200 years as i mentioned culturally calcutta had become the political and cultural capital of the entire india and by the 19th century in renaissance and reformation india was pioneered also in this city who forgets people such as raja ram mohan roy ishwar chandra vidya sagar shri ram krishna paramahansa swami vivekananda of course gurudev rabindranath tagore jagdish chandra bose satyendranath bose who co authored along with Einstein the Bose Einstein theory and many many more eminent personalities who enhanced the cultural heritage of the city of Calcutta I am personally inspired by Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore's one specific poem and a line that I hold very dear to my heart Jodi tor dak shune keu na ashe to bhi akla chalo re which really means if nobody listens to your call and nobody aligns with you be fearless enough to walk alone and walk forward you know because you have to strive it forward and you have to make things happen for you that has been the guiding principle of my own life for the last 50 some years jodi tor dak shune keu na ashe tobe akla chalo re i owe it to the city of calcutta my own journey after i was born in the city of jaunpur in way back in 1968 which we've covered in an episode earlier on the true grit rk show as a part of the inreel media enterprise i've covered the journeys from the soul jaunpur After I was born in Jaunpur my story shifted to Calcutta because that is where my father and his older brother used to live just around the time when my father got married and I was born we'll cover that in a bit more let's just cover a bit more of the history of Calcutta before we dive on ahead so literally from the time that in the 19th century around the 1860s when Calcutta was established the Supreme Court was set up Warren Hastings had made Calcutta the power of the political enterprise of the East India Company and subsequently the British Raj till 1912 Calcutta was the capital of India 
and that's when the british moved the capital to delhi and that happened only because as we will learn a little later the national freedom struggle or the struggle for independence took on such a prominence more so in bengal with people like of course who can forget binay badal dinesh bag we have of course the bankim chandra chattopadhyay and his bande matram and the inspiration that the nationalist struggle got over there and of course uh, you also have subhash chandra bose who had a presence in calcutta although he belonged to katak in orissa but calcutta was the epicenter of all the activities for the national struggle at that point in time to get freedom from the british raj so when things had become a little too hot for the british to handle uh, specifically when they were based in calcutta they decided to move the capital from calcutta to new delhi and a new capital in the lutyens delhi was created and we'll cover that in a subsequent episode where my journey is take me there as well and it is from 1912 and thereafter and in 1932 when the british india capital of new delhi was created calcutta started losing a bit of the preeminence and predominance and by 1932 new delhi had taken over as the capital of the british india and uh, calcutta continued to be a prominent city and when in 1947 india gained independence there again you will remember the fast that mahatma gandhi or mr mk gandhi had done because of the partition of india that had happened and all of the ensuing drama that had occurred between the partition of bengal between east bengal and west bengal the creation of those two regions based on a religious divide so calcutta uh, became subsequently the capital of the state of west bengal in india and continued to still hold a lot of preeminence and predominance in terms of the economic power of the country subsequently of course replaced by bombay a little later or mumbai a little later but for the early 20 years of you know, post independence calcutta continued to have a uh, prominence and predominance because of its cultural economic as well as um, industrial might there was a saying at least in my family what bengal does today or what calcutta does today the rest of india does tomorrow that was the truth and we'll cover that a little bit more uh, subsequently but quick history 1690 august job charnak an agent of east india company established calcutta leasing out three villages sutoroti gobindapur and kolikata 1698 east india company subsequently took over all of this and made from mr sabarna choudhury as he was called at that time the land formally a part of the british empire you know what used to be called as british east india company at that time 1699 east india company started developing calcutta as a presidency city 1715 the british people completed building the old fort of calcutta 1717 the mughal emperor farooq siar granted east india company the freedom to trade for a yearly payment of 3000 rupees what a paltry sum and then you see what happened the britishers took over control of the rest of india we gave up india for 3000 indian rupees literally at that point in time 1727 as per the order of king george the 1st a civil court was set up the city corporation was established and holwell became the first mayor of the city 1756 siraj ud daula attacks calcutta and conquers it and he changed the name of the city to ali nagar which happened in the year 1756 but in 1757 23 june british people under the leadership of robert clive defeated siraj ud daula at plassey the famous battle of plassey and calcutta was subsequently recaptured and converted to being a british a uh, own territory and the establishment formally of the british empire in india 1757 british printed the first currency bill in calcutta mint 1765 robert clive took bengal bihar and orissa from the badshah alam to of delhi with an agreement of paying excise duty 1772 calcutta became the capital of british india when the first governor general warren hastings transferred all important offices to the city from murshidabad 1780 james hickey established a printing press and published the first newspaper the bengal gazette 1784 the first official newspaper the calcutta gazette was published 1784 again sir william jones took the initiative and established the asiatic society of bengal which became the asiatic society of india in the year 1784 1801 fort william college was established on the grounds around fort williams which was then the british army cantonment 1804 the governor house presently the raj bhavan was built 1818 the first bengali magazine digodarshan was published from shirampur with the help of david hare 1817 the hindu college which is presently called as the presidency college was established with the efforts of raja ram mohan roy david hare radhakanta de initially it only started with 20 students a note here my own mother's father my nana ji 
was a student of Presidency College in Calcutta in the early 1900s. Deep connection with Presidency College all around here. 1829, Raja Ram Mohan Roy was successful in making Sati Daho or Anti Sati, a Hindu practice of Sati of having young brides um, being on the funeral pyre after their husband's death, banned by the British general Lord Bentick. It was one of the first, as we call it, movements where Raja Ram Mohan Roy took a very positive step in the change that helped the Indian community as a whole. 1854, the first railway was set up in India, in Calcutta, which ran from Calcutta to this uh, district of Hooghly, in the city of Hooghly. 1857, the University of Calcutta was established. 1873, the first tram car, which was horse-drawn, was set up in Calcutta. It was running at, almost at parallel with London City and some of the other cities in the world. A tram car and a railway in the city of Calcutta happened in the mid to three-fourths of the century of 1800s. Amazing, amazing development. India was, or British India was, really helped with some of these innovations and introductions that happened. 1875, the Statesman, a leading English daily newspaper, was started. It still continues to exist in Calcutta, the Statesman. Of course, you got the Telegraph and others now in Times of India, but the Statesman is one of the oldest newspapers in the country, and it is a leading English daily publisher of Calcutta. 1875, the Indian Museum was built. It still continues to be there in the city of Calcutta, right in the middle, right on what is called as the area around Esplanade. 1883, Surendranath Banerjee called for the National Convention, which led to the forming of the first Indian National Congress in 1885 in Bombay. But the seeds of it were sown in 1883 in the city of Calcutta by Surendranath Banerjee. 1888, the Indian Football League was established, way before many football leagues of many nations were set up. In 1888, the Indian Foot Football Association was created which of course led to the creation of Mohan Bagan, East Bengal, Mohammedan Sporting, so the very, very famous football clubs in the city of Calcutta. I still remember as a little child, I used to sing Chabirali, Kadbirali, Manoj Bajai Dhol, Aire Shabai Dekheja, Sham Thapar Gol. Sham Thapa used to be from East Bengal, the club team called as East Bengal. Shabirali used to play for Mohammedan Sporting. Manoj uh, used to play for Mohammedan Sporting, uh, for, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mohan Bagan. And this used to be a very, very interesting little ditty that we used to sing whenever East Bengal, Mohammedan Sporting and uh, Mohan Bagan used to play. In fact, there was a movie created, I remember, called Mohan Bagan and East Bengal in Calcutta, which was famous for movie making back in the days. And the song used to be Mohan Bagan e East Bengal e khala hoeche. People were crazy about Mohan Bagan in East Bengal playing their football games. And I used to be a part of it as well as a young kid. Uh, who can forget, you know, Shabir Ali, Manush Bhattacharya, as well as... Um, you know, Sham Thapa, some of those prominent players, childhood was spent uh, watching those games. Of course, 1896, uh, the first motor car appeared on the city of Calcutta. 1902, the first electric car, a uh, tram car from Resplanade to Khidarpur, Khidarpur docks. The docks were in Khidarpur and people had to travel when, you know, ships would unload over there. So, of course, the first electric tram car was set up from Esplanade to Khidarpur. 1905, Lord Curzon, the Viceroy of India, tried to partition Bengal. It was a big protest. And finally, it was withdrawn. But in 1905, Lord Curzon had kind of set the seeds of wanting to partition Bengal along the lines of religion, which was subsequently done in 1947, again by the British, when they created East Pakistan, West Pakistan, and of course, India. Of course, East Pakistan became Bangladesh in 1971. We will cover that in an episode as well, because my family is connected with 1971 and the war of Bangladesh independence with Mukti Bahini in a very interesting way. And we'll cover that in an episode as well. That's from my wife's side of the family. 1911, the British moved the capital of India from Calcutta to Delhi. And I told you why they did that, because things had become a little too hot for them to handle in the city of Cal Calcutta because of the nationalist movement that had taken big presence. And of course, by all means, Subhash Chandra Post and the Indian National Army had a big role to play in it. 1913, Rabindranath Tagore, the great philosopher, poet, received the Nobel Prize in Literature. Of course, he got it for Gitanjali. Of course, he was India's first Nobel laureate. He happened to be from the city of Calcutta, from the area of Jorasaku. Another very interesting tidbit. My mother's side of the family still holds properties that are there in the area of Jorasaku, in the area of Bada Bazaar in Calcutta. So literally from Ganesh Talkies on Chitranjan Avenue, right up to Matriya Mangal and Marwadi Relief Society, those properties are connected to my mother's side of the family. That's again a saga of, as I call it, the Mughal Empire when it comes to my mother's side of the family. Very well prominent people, lots of properties. But of course, as things happen, things just over the years wither away. Uh, when you have too much of riches, you don't know how to handle it. 
and things just go a little awry and we'll cover that a little bit down in my a journey with my own mother's side of the family 1921 king edward the 8 inaugurated the victoria memorial the victoria memorial still stands very grand right in the middle of calcutta a little bit on the left side of the maidan victoria memorial is a beautiful resplendent representation of victorian style architecture built in white pristine marble it's very close to the birla planetarium a lot of fun summer afternoons and evenings were spent playing at the maidan and having some as they say a puchka or golgappas as they call it in north india and jhalmuri just around victoria memorial and often i've gone inside victoria memorial to have a look because i used to be fascinated by literally it's a museum of sort you know although there was the indian national museum in calcutta but Victoria Memorial houses a lot of British India you know artifacts which i've been rather fascinated by 1924 chitranjan das was elected as the first indian mayor of the city of calcutta chitranjan das chitranjan avenue uh, named after him was the first mayor indian mayor of calcutta 1929 agnes bishu mother teresa as we call her came to calcutta to join the bengal loreto mission and of course mother teresa got a nobel prize as well and was canonized after her death she passed away in the city of calcutta which she had made home 1941 uh, tagore rabindranath tagore uh, passed on 1946 the communal riots killed thousands of people around the city when india was being partitioned by the british between as we call it pakistan and india terrible situation on the lines of religion a nation that existed for such a long time as one was split just along the lines of religion and a carnage happened and calcutta bared the brunt of it Of course Mahatma Gandhi did go in into a fast uh, unto death and that was in the city of Calcutta uh, that's another part of the Indian freedom struggle history 1947 India gained independence Bengal was partitioned Calcutta became the capital city of the state of West Bengal in India Dr Prafulla Chandra Ghosh became the first chief minister of West Bengal followed by Dr Bidhan Chandra Ray Dr Bidhan Chandra Ray and my mother's grandfather had a very deep connection we can talk about it at some other point but Dr Bidhan Chandra Ray Calcutta and surrounding places were flooded with the people who flooded and fled from East Pakistan now Bangladesh as a result of the partition and Dr Bidhan Chandra Ray had to take a lot of steps in order to contain that situation that happened in calcutta as a result of the partition dr bidhan chandra ray was a very prominent physician as well one of the better recognized uh, leaders of post freedom uh, west bengal and india who helped establish bengal in a very prominent manner so that india had bengal and calcutta as the economic powerhouse for at least 20 plus years after independence till bombay took over more significantly we will get an into that in in certain other journeys from the soul later on 1977 the CPIM party won the state elections and came into power and of course came with it the rule of the uh, CPIM government for a very very long time and Jyoti Basu became the longest serving chief minister of any state in India I'm connected with him so much so that the school that he went to was the school that I had gone to in in Calcutta of course the St Xavier's Collegiate School in Park Street Calcutta so there's a lot of connection in history there 1979 Mother Teresa was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize She used to live in the city of Calcutta. 1984, the first metro underground railway was started from Tolliganj to Esplanade. Actually, 1985 is when it was formally inaugurated. I did sit in the first uh, trip that was made from Tolliganj to Esplanade. My grandmother, my nani, and I sat in it. It was the first metro railway set up in India ever, and uh, it was it was the best joy ride of my life. I just stepped out of tenth grade, if I'm not mistaken. It was quite a joy ride that we had. but the city of calcutta has also given us satyajit ray eminent film director he got the legion the honor the highest civilian award from france from president francois mitterrand in calcutta in 1989 1992 satyajit ray received the oscar award and lifetime achievement award in bharat ratna for his theology apur sansar uh, who can forget it was one of the prominent people from calcutta uh, mother teresa of course passed on in calcutta in 1997 amartya sen is from calcutta and in 1998 He grew up actually in Shantiniketan and studied in Calcutta, and he received a Nobel Prize in Economics in 1998. And in 2001, the city of Kolkata was created from the city of Calcutta, as it used to be called earlier. So that's a brief history of the city of Calcutta. But my connections, own personal journey, as I said, after Jaunpur, I moved over to Calcutta, where my father and his older brother used to live in the area called as you know Prince Anwar Shah Road. of course it has become very famous now with the south city mall being there 
earlier where south city mall was there used to be a place called jay engineering works or joy engineering works as it used to be called in bengal a bengali my father's older brother used to work there it used to be manufacturing fans and uh, sewing machines for usha and uh, he was a foundry manager my father himself his first career was in calcutta after he graduated from xlri in jamshedpur he used to work for surajmal nagarmal which was an 8 bbd bag people used to call it dalhousie square but uh, in bengal it is called as binoy badol dinesh bag my father's office was right there i visited it so many times um, as a child uh, dalhousie square uh, was created writers building which is where the legislature for bengal is is also right in bbd bag subsequently my father's older brother of course moved over to johnston pumps and mclean and mager incidentally the ceo of mclean and mager mr bm khatan his younger son aditya khatan was my classmate and my benchmate with me in st xavier's calcutta in xavier's i had the signs of very many prominent uh, industrial families of calcutta as my classmates adarsh jalan of bell controls you know of the jalan family uh, he was my classmate sort of saxaria the guy who's uh, parents set up so many schools in calcutta including shikshayatan he was my classmate so i grew up in as they call uh, august company in st xavier's collegiate school on park street many memories but as i said my father and his older brother used to live in prince anwar shah road when i was born of course my father and my mother they relocated to deck gardens right behind prince anwar shah road and by that time my father's older brother uh, with whom of course whose family i grew up for a very long period of time subsequently in calcutta they moved over to taliganj club 100b baburam ghosh road i just went there recently to have a look at it things have changed it was right across uh from Taliganj club uh, right behind where the Sangeet Natak Academy of ITC is ITC is where I started my career in ITC hotels ITC is headquartered in Calcutta at uh, Virginia House and our house was literally behind ITC Sangeet Natak Academy on 100B Baburam Ghosh Road beautiful bungalow that I have fond memories of from my childhood I have memories of my house in Lake Gardens as well uh of the roof of growing up there learning the first few uh, I I probably was about um 6 months old from you know i don't have memories when i was 6 months old but definitely have memories from around around the age of 3 of that roof because uh, although we had relocated to madras from calcutta by that time my mother and my father used to bring me back every year at least twice a year and we'd go and visit all these places so lake gardens is very close there was a little zoo i'm told that used to be there in lake gardens uh, my various uncles who would visit my parents often would take me there for walks or to smoke their cigarettes and to enjoy a little bit of their uh, little bachelorhood time as i'm told i won't get into details because my uncles may get after me now both on my father's and my mother's side so i won't get into whatever they used to do in lake gardens around while taking me out for go- walks but um, i do remember uh, lake gardens very fondly i remember um, 100b baburam ghosh road even more so right from the age of 3 almost till the age of 12 or 13 before the family relocated to bardwan court on uh, in alipur on bardwan road uh, my mother's side of the family of course had a very interesting history along with the movement of wajid ali shah from the awadh region the nawab of awadh wajid ali shah was deposed and sent over to metia burs in calcutta with him came a lot of families from the up and awadh region which moved in into the calcutta side and my mother's side of the family also moved in at that point in time and established themselves in the city of calcutta in the area called as bada bazar which was the old part of the city near sutonoti the village of sutonoti which is now called as sutapatti who can forget the area between matriya mangal marwadi relief society and chitranjan avenue where i have traversed those gullies or those by lanes as a kid so many times going over to satnarayan park where interestingly the history of haldirams one of the snack food giants of india started where tiwari sweets is so you know i remember as a child going with my mother's father my nana ji to pick up bhujia or those savory chickpea uh, that uh, haldiram the old gentleman would actually pack in plastic bags and seal with you know with with literally mombatti or candle in order to seal it and give it to you in plastic bags i remember that i remember going and having samosas chickpea and potato stuff uh, savories in uh, tiwari sweets along with some chai that my nana ji used to have and gulab jamuns i did go back to those places again in february of this year i went in and visited all of those places recreated memories satnarayan park or satyanarayan park was a prominent area in calcutta my own family used to live on chitpur lane in bada bazar right behind uh, what used to be called as the lower chitpur road is the area 
it connects you from Chitranjan Avenue right till Esplanade. And on that, you had massive cross-cultural segment. You had, of course, Dora Saku and Rabindranath Tagore's family. You, of course, had the people who had relocated from UP, which were the Khatris. You also have Muslim population as you went a little bit more towards Esplanade. There was a big masjid over there, the big Calcutta masjid. Then you went a little bit more towards Esplanade. You had the Chinese population that had relocated to India, Bentick Street. And then came in Esplanade, which had a lot of Bengali old-time population. So, interestingly, that one street called Chitpur Road, Lower Chitpur, right up to Esplanade, was a cross-cultural assimilation of humankind. Some prominent places that I remember very well. Who can forget Kanhaiya's Kachori? Early morning breakfast in a, a patta or a dona, as they used to call it, with fresh stuffed kachoris with the potato, you know, aloo uh, ki sabzi. I remember that very well. Kanhaiya's Kachori is still around. I'm hopeful they're doing well. Uh, great memories and jalebis, of course. And who but can forget, you know, Nepal Chandra Halwai, purveyors of great sandesh, Notun Guder Sandesh, who can forget KC Das, uh, Rasgullas. Now, people can claim that Orissa gave the Rasgullas to India, which are really cooked paneer or cottage cheese balls steeped in syrup. But I still say, even though Orissa may have created the Rasgulla, it was perfected and it was presented to the world through none other than KC Das, who put it in tins for the first time, Ganguram of Gold Market. I have very, very fond memories of going to Gold Market by uh, Garia Hart and picking up uh, honey, they used to call it honey, or, uh, you know, earthenware pots in which you would have a lot of balls of sweetened syrupy uh, rasgullas uh, that you would bring home, put it into uh, the fridge and have it cold practically almost every other night. The food from Calcutta, of course, the rasgulla, the notun gurer shandesh, the chum chum. Ah, man, you just can go completely nuts with the Bengali style mishti, the mishti doi. And then, of course, you've got the wraps or the kati rolls, nizams, uh, jhalmuri, puchka. The visit to Newmarket, and I used to visit Newmarket because my aunt would love going there practically every afternoon for buying groceries or something else. And my school was pretty close to Newmarket, so often she would pick me up from school and we would go in over and we'd complete the grocery shopping from 3 to 5 and then pick up my cousin from Don Bosco and would pick up my sister from Lady Brabon. Of course, I have puchkas even there because the puchkas and Lady Brabon were outstanding. Come back. This was practically daily feature almost. And Thursdays used to be a holiday for us, for me and my, my first cousin. And so Thursday was movie day uh, for us. We would often land up in some movie hall around the new market area, out of the world. Now, another side of a you know, fun fact is that my father's side of the family my father's grandmother's family were also from Calcutta in the area called Malapara. And Malapara was the Tandon family, which were prominent uh, barristers. And in fact, right now, Harish Tandon, my father's youngest cousin from his side of the family, is actually a, a chief justice, in fact, a high court judge in Calcutta High Court. That family, uh, the Tandons of Malapara, Mahesh Prashad Khatri and his family were prominent barristers. I often have gone to Malapara area, which is very close to Alu Posta. You know, it used to be amazing going in over to those monuments uh, because Calcutta was also called as the city of palaces. Of course, Dominic Lepere called it the city of joy. It was the city of joy for various reasons. Uh, you could look at it in both sides um, uh, in terms of how it was the city of joy. But I call it also the city of palaces because each of the houses that I have visited as a child the palatial structures. Of course, Calcutta has gone through a bit of a transition now. Bombay has taken over prominence. While Calcutta was the jute capital of the world, Calcutta was at that point in time the place where great hotels existed. You had the Great Eastern Hotel of Calcutta, you had the Grand Hotel the Oberoi's had taken over. You had, of course, presence of so many regal buildings built in the Victorian style. Of course, Calcutta has taken a bit of a hit because Although it had a lot of presence of the Marwari community, which were owners of industries back then associated with jute, electrical, related to modernate technology at that point in time. Unfortunately, uh, Bombay took over precedence uh, subsequently and Calcutta lost a bit of that sheen over the last um, almost 30, 35, 40 years of India's uh, post-independence where Bombay took over and Calcutta went into a bit of a decline. I won't get into the political side of the conversation of why that happened. I'm just going to stick to the facts that what used to be the juggernaut economic powerhouse, the driver of India's economy at one point in time, has taken a back seat when compared to other parts of India, such as Bangalore, Mumbai, Madras, 
and others which have taken over pre- predominance now. But you still can't take away the Calcutan from me. I could go on and on and on. There's so much to cover in Calcutta, both from my mother's side of the family and my father's side of the family. I have to make sure that I keep this uh, restricted to a little bit of a time frame here. But uh, let's put it clearly, my association with Calcutta is very deep. Whether it is the Victoria Memorial, where I spent countless hours, where it is the Birla Planetarium, you know, the fact that I've gone to the uh, first zoological park, the Zoological Survey of India, which is really the zoo in Calcutta, whether it was the first race course that I ever visited near Hastings, whether it was going over to the Writers Building, whether it was visiting uh, 8 BBD Bag, which is right in the center of Dalhousie, or what is called as 8 BBD Bag, or the office quarters section of Calcutta, whether it was going to Esplanade, going over to Newmarket, Tolliganj Club, my own school, St. Xavier's Collegiate School. How on earth can I ever forget what St. Xavier's Collegiate School means to me? Great time spent. What I've become today and the ability to speak came from the elocution competitions that I had to go through under Father Waverill and Father Robson. My classmates are doing exceedingly well from Xavier's Calcutta. Great memories. I was there recently and took a lot of pictures. Uh, Neil Ultra, Ultra, who can forget the magazine that we used to co- contribute to in Xavier's. I, I can probably shed it here. Calcutta means so much to me in terms of what it has given to me, what it has made out of me and those memories that exist. And of course, when I'm talking about Xavier's, I also have to talk about the fact that I used to jump sometimes the school wall or escape from the side and we used to go to play video games, which were newly just launched in the early 1980s, Invader Center. And often when we were crossing to go to Invader Center on Park Street, Fleury's used to come in and Fleury's had rum balls. And uh, we, of course, had the owners of Fleury's who were connected to classmates of mine. And we would get a few of the rum balls even then on the side. And who can deny deny that the best rum balls came in from uh, Fleury's even to this date. I went and had some rum balls there recently. And Park Street, of course, was flooded with food items of the finest kind and restaurants such as Moulin Rouge, Peter Cat. Of course, you had, you know, the hotel over there, which was a park hotel. One of my good uh, friends and classmates from my hotel management days uh, did work there for, as the executive chef and corporate chef for a very long time. Memories, whether it be the Chinese food of Calcutta from Tangra, whether it be the Kati rolls, whether it be the Puchka, the Jhalmuri, uh, the Churmura, whether it be the Rasagullas of Kesi Das, the Shandesh of Nepal Chandra Halwai, whether it would be the, you know, the Rasagullas of Ganguram, Cham Chams. Oh, I can go crazy. I can just go crazy. The Marwadi food, who can deny the Marwadi food of Calcutta? Let's not forget about the fact that there was an area in Calcutta which is dominated by the Tamilians primarily, which happened to be around Desapriya Park. And whenever we were craving, because I had spent a lot of time in Tamil Nadu as well, you know, right after Calcutta, I had gone to Chennai or Madras. We'll cover that in another episode. But when we came back to Calcutta every time, or when we spent some more years in Calcutta subsequently, we would often go to Prema Vilas and Komola Vilas in Deshapriya Park, you know, because um, Acharya Jagdish Chandra Bose Road, because you got authentic Tamilian food in Komola Vilas. Huge memories. I think I'll start shedding a tear now if I carry on any further. But with that, you know, I got to sign off uh, today from my journeys from the soul. Calcutta has played a very important part. We'll revisit it, Calcutta again because there are more stories to tell. But for today, we'll sign off and we'll catch up on another episode and uh, it'll be Chennai the next time around or Madras. But for now, bidding you adieu from my journey to Calcutta and we'll catch up on another time. Bye for now.